yourself. Hello, everyone. My name is Dominic. Uh, and I'm Amy. And we are both PMs here at Microsoft on the uh, Visual Studio for Mac team. We are here today to show you how to work in Visual Studio for Mac and uh, show you some of our favorite tips, tricks, and some of the things that we really like about Visual Studio for Mac. So, Dom, what can uh, Visual Studio for Mac do for me? You know, uh, I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure, Amy. Uh, what can Visual Studio do for you? Uh, well, let's say it this way. If I were to put it in a nutshell, right, you can build you know, a number of things. You know, you can build uh, apps, uh, games, services for mobile, web, desktop, and the cloud. So, yeah, a few, just a few things, right? Um, and I know, I know this really excites you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, it excites me sometimes too. Uh, but don't worry, we will uh, go into this in a lot more detail over the uh, course of this presentation. Uh, so I'd like to start off with a brief introduction uh, about what Visual Studio for Mac is. Uh, Visual Studio for Mac is a uh, native Mac OS application that has the look and feel that you would expect on a Mac. So for those of you who are familiar with the Macs, are you going to feel that same, uh, same thing that you feel on, on the Mac uh, for any other application? Uh, for those of you that are used to Visual Studio on Windows, uh, we know that uh, you know it's going to feel a little bit different for you. It might be a little bit jarring because uh, because of those differences. Uh, but where possible, we try to make uh, make uh, be very mindful of those differences to make it easier for you. Uh, speaking of making things easier, we also try to make it easy for you to uh, download and get running with Visual Studio for Mac pretty uh, pretty easily. Uh, once you've downloaded and installed it, it's a, it's a single uh, single download that you can get. Once you've downloaded and installed it, you can activate it using your existing Visual Studio subscription uh, just by logging into the IDE. Uh, it's not a problem at all if you don't have one of those uh, Visual Studio um, subscriptions. Uh, you can, if you're uh, if you're eligible, you can uh, you can use Visual Studio for Mac Community Edition. Now, uh, from the uh, moving on, we have a few different types of projects that we support in Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, from the File New Solution menu, you can actually access a variety of different uh, project templates. Uh, you can create, we have some of them listed here, you can create .NET Core apps, ASP.NET uh, Core projects, uh, you can do uh, cross-platform mobile development with uh, Xamarin, you can deploy, connect to Azure, work with Azure functions, uh, and then actually something that I'm pretty excited about myself. Um, and I'm, I'm personally, you know, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, Visual Studio for Mac is actually now the home of, uh, of Unity on the Mac. And you can develop your Unity apps, uh, Unity games, uh, not just games, but apps too, uh, using Visual Studio for Mac. Uh, so right now, uh, with Visual Studio for Mac, you can, uh, we, we have support for C Sharp, which is a language you can, uh, common, it's commonly used for creating cross-platform apps cross-platform applications uh, and we actually support up through C-Sharp 7 which is the, uh, the latest versions and for those of you who are a uh, one of those strongly type functional programming language persons uh, we're looking out for you guys too uh, I think uh, Amy knows some folks that are uh, uh, F-Sharp <laughs> fans <laughs> so uh, you also have the ability in Visual Studio to, uh, for Mac to write and debug in F-Sharp uh, something that I'd also like to talk about is uh, some of the web, the web bits. Uh, we also have editor support for Razor, for JavaScript, TypeScript. Uh, you can do HTML, CSS. Uh, we give you access to syntax highlighting, uh, to IntelliSense if you're one of those uh, web developers and writing for the web. Um, and speaking of IntelliSense, uh, you'll be happy to know that IntelliSense is actually um, well, IntelliSense, along with all of our uh, analyzers, code fixes, uh, refactorings that Visual Studio for Mac can give you, it's uh, it's all powered by Roslyn, which is the the same engine that Visual Studio on uh, on Windows uses. So, if you're accustomed to those features on Windows, uh, you'll see those transfer over to the Mac as well. Uh, we also know uh, it's very important to test. Uh, and uh, some of us are a little bit better at testing than others. If you're a little bit more responsible than, uh, 
if you're a little bit more responsible than I am, uh, you'll be happy to know that you can uh, you can use a few different kinds of tests. Uh, templates are built into VS for Mac. You can do uh, MS test, N unit, X unit tests, um, all in Visual Studio for Mac, which will help you to uh, you know maintain your code health uh, and show code coverage, uh, all that sort of good stuff. If you again, if you're a responsible person. Uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about for now, I know I don't have it listed here, uh, but I did want to, uh, actually I do have it listed here, sorry. Uh, but the last thing I want to talk about, I'm going to talk about later again, is version control. So we're going to talk about Git subversion later on, uh, as well as Team Foundation uh, version control. Uh, so we'll talk about those later. And, uh, you know, we, we have a, you know, Visual Studio for Mac is a nice IDE. There's a lot of features in it. Uh, and I think Amy might have uh, some tips for us about the IDE. So do you want to show us uh, show some of the things that uh, you know about the IDE? Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to um, show you guys on a tour of the IDE. Um, <clears throat> so first off, um, there's a couple of different types of settings that you'll want to be aware of whenever you're personalizing the, um, the IDE. Um, these are the IDE preferences. Um, these are used to make the IDE function in the way that you want it to. Um, things like themes, code folding, um, these are all IDE preferences and you can find them from the preferences menu which I'll be showing you in just a second. Um, we've also got project options which affect how your app is built, so things like um, build configurations, uh, compiler options, um, they're all included there. Um, and you can get to the project options either by right-clicking on the project name in the solution pad or just by double-clicking on it and they'll bring it up. Um, and then policies which relate to your code, styling and format. Um, and you can adjust these again through the preferences um, dialog. Um, so what I'm going to do now is uh, give you a little demo so we can run through and I can show you um, some of the interesting things in Visual Studio for Mac. Right. Thanks, Amy. Let's see. All right. So, you know, as we were saying, everyone has their own personal preferences over how they want the IDE to look and feel and act. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, if we, uh, like, how many times have you heard people argue over tabs or spaces, right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> So I want to show you some ID preferences that you can use to get Visual Studio for Mac working just the, the way you want it. Um, and then I'll also give you a quick tour of um, the ID itself. So um, this is the welcome page. So whenever you open up Visual Studio for Mac for the first eighth, tenth, hundredth time, this is the first thing that you're going to see. Um, you can open a new project from here, open an existing project. Um, you can see all your recent projects. Um, but before we get into that, I wanted to show you how to customize the IDE. So to access the preferences, that's just uh, through the Visual Studio menu item right here. Um, and there's a ton of things that you can access through here. Um, we have a lot of people asking for um, a dark theme. And we introduced that um, probably a year ago, maybe? Yes, a little while ago. That's about right, yeah. um, our designers were really put to work with this. Um, they designed every single little icon for uh, <laughs> dark theme, just so that it looks like as amazing on dark theme as it does on light theme. Um, so you can, just, you can just change that in here. Yeah, Amy and I, I think, are both really, really uh, strong supporters of light theme. Yeah, I'm one of those people <laughs> who, who use light theme for everything. Uh, but I, I will say that as far as dark themes go, um, you know, it's it's not bad. Yeah, I know no, ours, of, ours is amazing. A lot of people really like the dark theme, so uh, you know, to each their own. But yeah. I guess uh, I guess we're we're a little bit on the same <laughs> side there, right? <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> um, okay, so um, next thing that's super important is key bindings. Um, so with the key bindings in Visual Studio for Mac, you can actually set the the scheme. So if you're coming from um, another ID, uh, whether it be Visual Studio for Mac on Windows. Um, Xcode, you can just choose something that matches, you know, what you're fami uh, familiar with. Um, I'm just going to keep it with the, the standard one for now. But what I am going to do is show you how to add a key binding. Um, so we just added this cool reported problem tool. 
um, a little while ago, and I love Violent Bugs. I, I, Pile and Bugs is my favorite. Yeah, Amy um, and I, uh, we work in the same office, and I think every morning Amy kicks the door down and she says, how many bugs am I going to file today? <laughs> so I want to make it easier <laughs> for myself to make, uh, you know, to file bugs. Um, so to do that, I'm going to add a, a new key binding for the report a problem feature. Make it easy. Um, yeah. So uh, let me see. I'm just going to set like, um, so I'm just going to select it here. I searched for it. I'm just going to um, set the binding command D. Doesn't look like that's taken. Cool. Um, uh, if it was taken, what happens? It would just pro uh, uh, it would come up and tell me that there's conflict. Oh, cool. So I just have to choose something else instead. Nice. Yeah, no, it, it will complain. Um, I'm just going to add that. And there we go. Um, let me see, I can show you. Command D. There we go. Easy peasy. That's awesome. Didn't have to use my That's voice. awesome. <laughs> Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So that's the environment. Now, my, the text editor section in preferences is probably one of my favorite. Um, there's tons of stuff that you can do in here. Um, in the general section, you can enable code folding. I find that really handy, um, especially whenever I'm looking through like huge code files, um, just to try and navigate a little bit easier. Um, another one, markers and rulers. Um, so I don't know about anybody else in here, but I, if, if I had a dollar for every time I didn't have a matching brace, and I, you know, I ran my app and the compiler started yelling at me and I was about to start crying and then I realized that <laughs> I had just, you know, not included a brace. <laughs> I'd have like at least 10 bucks. Um, but uh, so now I, I, once I find this feature, turned it on and now I always like to just double check, make sure that, you know, I've got my matchy braces there. Um, I also like to just double check and, um, uh, so I can see my current line, just so I know where I am in the file. Um, and I also like to make sure highlighted dead fire references is turned on. One thing that's really handy there is if the reference is um, assigned, it will actually be highlighted in red. Um, and if it's referenced, it will be in blue. Um, so it's a handy tip there. Um, again, um, coming back to braces, um, once I realized that I could just insert a matching brace, that was really handy for me. Um, because then the compiler doesn't try to make quite as much and I'm much happier. Um, and you can also add, uh, you know, smart semicolon placement here too, if that's your thing. In case you forget those semicolons. Yep. Um, and another cool feature is color theme. So while you can change the, um, the, the theme of the ID in general, you can also change the theme um, of the editor. Um, so we have a variety of different themes here, but we also do support um, Visual Studio themes and TextMate themes. Um, you can just add those um, and apply it and, and it will it'll work straight away. Um, yeah. So um, as I mentioned, um, so policies uh, are what we use to describe the code styling and formatting. Um, so I just want to show you that really quickly as well. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, so in the source code section under code formatting, uh, I'm just going to look at the C sharp co uh, source code for now, but you can do this for, you know, anything else, F sharp, XML, whatever it is you're using. You can set uh, your, your preferred policy or whatever policy it is that you use in Mono Visual Studio. Um, if you want to edit that as well, you can just go to the C sharp format tab. Just hit edit, and uh, let's see. I'm gonna insert a space. Yeah, um, and it'll give you a little preview of exactly what's going on as well. So you can just customize that policy kind of as you want. Um, and yeah, so that's uh, setting your policies. Um, so you can also use this preferences menu to set the uh, NuGet source locations, uh, version control message style, and various other things. I do highly encourage um, anybody just to check out, if you haven't 
you know browse through the preferences menu before just check it out and go and see all the features in there and i'm sure you'll find um you know something that you didn't know was in there um, it'll be quite a nice treat so uh if i'm working with you on uh, some shared code and we have some different opinions on you know how we want to work there yeah what, what do we do there okay um so that's a great question um, so we now have support as well for editor config files, okay. um, uh, which means that um, you know uh, you can have your spaces and I can have my tabs, <laughs> and you know whenever we're committing the file and we're we're using it all together with the team, um, then Miguel is happy, and that that's good. Yeah, yeah, that's what matters at the end of the day. Um, yeah. So uh, now that you've got your IDE working the way you want it, um, let me give you a lay of the land in the IDE itself. So I'm just going to open up uh, my super cool app, which is just um, an iOS um, single view app straight from the template. And you see whenever we open this up, uh, we have what's called a workspace here. Um, above the workspace is um, your toolbar. So you have uh, your run debug buttons. You've got your project configurations here. Um, You've also got your notification bar. Um, so whenever you know you're um, uploading to Azure, whenever your project's building, you can see um, exactly what's going on then. Um, and you've got your search over here. You can also very easily access the search through the command full stop option. Um, and that will just come up there. Um, so as I was saying, we've also got, um, we usually use what's called um, workspaces. And the workspace consists of the document area um, and the document area would be like the code editor, um, as we have here, if you're using a designer file, um, it, it uh, you know, would be the designer surface um, for an iOS storyboard or something. Um, and it's surrounded by complementary pads. So here we have the solution pad. Um, we would have, you know, your properties, your toolbox along the side. And all these... Um, all these uh, default layouts are there for you. So you've got code, debug, design, test, um, so that can very easily jump between the different different layouts. Um, it is important to uh, it's important to note that by default, um, Visual Studio for Mac will open any new solution um, that you have in a new workspace and actually close the current workspace. Um, but however, you can open more than one solution in a single workspace by going to File and Open, and just select the, um, you know, the solution file that you want. Go to Options and uncheck this Close Current Workspace, and then hit Open, and it will open in the same workspace. Now, if you're using a solution, or if you want to open a solution that you've recently used, you can actually go to File, Recent Solutions, Hold down the control key and just select it. And again, it'll just open um, in the in the workspace, in the same workspace. So say I want to open um, say I want to open a new file here, and this is from a different solution altogether. Um, I can actually play around with um, my documents here and I can have them side by side. So I can just pull it, pull the tab out move it to the side, and there we have it side by side, which is pretty cool. Um, if you want, if you're using more than one monitor as well, you can actually pull it right out of the IDE and have it as, as a separate window altogether, which is pretty, pretty nice. Um, finally, um, one thing that I do want to mention is that on a Mac, um, all apps are single instance. Um, and what that means is that once it's kind of like already open here, if you click on it again in the dock, um, that um, it, it will just open the same instance that you're in. If you want to open a new instance, you can just do that in the command line. So just with open n. Uh, let me see applications. And that'll just open a new instance for you. And this was life changing when I figured this out a couple of years ago when I when I started using Max. <laughs> Absolutely uh, yeah. life changing. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Let me just close that instance because I don't really need it. All right. 
All right, let's get this back up. And, uh, all right. So thank you very much for that, Amy. Sure. Thanks for that run through. Um, I would like to talk a little bit now about ASP.NET uh, Core in uh, Visual Studio for Mac. So uh, if we can hit the next slide there. Awesome. So uh, ASP.NET Core allows you to uh, do, you know, just do a few things. You can develop and build uh, some awesome cloud-based, um, internet-connected, cross-platform applications. And you can, uh, you can you know, have the ability to create web apps. You can create services, backends. Um, you know, something if you, you really want to, you can even uh, do something like uh, connecting your uh, coffee pot to the internet using IoT. Uh, and at the moment, uh, Visual Studio for Mac supports .NET Core 2.1, uh, which is, again, the latest version of the uh, .NET Core uh, AP, uh, SDK. And you'll be able to, uh, with this, create um, web apps using uh, Razor Pages or MVC, in addition to uh, ASP.NET uh, Web API projects. Uh, with this also comes IntelliSense formatting and all those other features that you're used to uh, for various files, uh, like Razor files, temp, uh, TypeScript, uh, JavaScript, uh, CSS, HTML files. And uh, something that's really cool, you can also hook up with Docker and throw your ASP.NET uh, Core uh, pages or projects into containers. Um, one thing that I do want to say as well is that uh, in, inside of Visual Studio for Mac, you can actually uh, configure the location of your .NET Core SDK in case you had a previous install or you want multiple installs of .NET Core. Um, so you can go into the preferences page, which Amy showed us earlier, and, uh, and change the location there. And then uh, I did want to uh, get us up and running with a, a little bit of a demo, uh, just to see a, a little bit of what we can do with uh, ASP.NET uh, Core. So I'm... Uh, Gonna get the uh, get the ID up and running and uh, fire away. So uh, I'm gonna show you uh, once we we clean this out. All right. Okay. So I'm gonna show you a uh, a new uh, the templates that we have for .NET Core. So if you go into file oh, file new solution. I uh, will open this up. These are templates uh, for .NET Core. If we scroll down here, you'll see uh, the app. And you'll see that we've got a, a few options here. Uh, I'm going to select a .NET Core web app. Now, this is a Razor template and the preferred way to create pages in HTML. And I know that there's an MVC one below it. And you might be asking, well, you know, when do I pick between Razor and MVC? If you're looking to do just a, you know, an HTML website, uh, Razor is going to be your choice. If you're looking to do something that will also serve like as a web API, um, you know, go with MVC. Uh, there's good news about this though. You know, you're not locked into one of them if you choose one over the other. It's not you know the end of the world. Uh, you can actually add MVC, Razor pages, even web API bits to all of your projects and shuffle things around. Uh, so instead of uh, going through and creating a a uh, app. Um, I'm going to I'm going to open one up that I uh, conveniently just have here, you know, just randomly on the computer. <laughs> so uh, when, as this loads up, I just wanted to show one thing really quick. Um, Amy's actually going to touch on this a little bit later, and that's if you right-click on your project here, go over to publish. You can actually publish uh, some of your functions or products to Azure. And you can publish your your .NET Core web app. As yeah, well. you can publish your .NET web uh, .NET Core web app to the show as well. Uh, so I'll just show you quickly some uh, some code completion in IntelliSense. So I'm going to go down to my ASP.NET uh, web app. I'm going to go down here into my index page, and I'm going to add a uh, a new property here. Uh, let's just add it. Let's just throw it here. Um, I'm actually going to use a little bit of a, uh, a cheat code, a little template here. So I'm going to type in prop, hit tab, and uh, it's going to fill this out for me. I'm going to make a string, hit tab again. I'm going to call it totes prop because it's totally a property. <laughs> and then I'm going to go over to my uh, my index 
uh, CSHTML, not my .cs one, and you'll see if I, uh, let's say, at model, oh, sorry, there we go, I can do totes, and it's, it's there, you know, I can access that. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of that because I'm just being a little silly there. But what I think is really important is showing you how to configure multiple builds in Visual Studio for Mac. So if I select my entire solution and hit options here, you can go down to my run configurations and I'll add a new configuration. I call it uh, totes all because it's totally going to run all of my, my projects. I'm going to create that, double click that, and I'm going to select all the projects, uh, all the projects in my solution. Hit OK. And now I'm going to run it. And uh, there we go. So that is, that is going. Uh, so while that's going, I will say a, a couple things, or oh, one thing here. It's uh, something that's really cool to know is that uh, with the latest uh, versions of ASP.NET Core, when you create a project, it actually has support for um, HTTPS built into it, so you can easily convert over to a um, to a secure uh, website if you'd like. Mm, you need to say. Oh, and yeah, thank you, Amy. So I was actually really silly. I created that. Uh, so this is really good. This is a really good lesson. If you don't select that. Uh, build configuration, then it won't run everything. So we only ran the function there. So I'm going to close that. And uh, let's start again. So uh, good catch. Thank you, Amy. So that'll take just a little bit there as it spins up. Uh, it's running that function. It's creating that um, or getting that ASP.NET call website ready. Uh, so that'll just pop up in a sec. We're going to go to this website here. And let's, there it is. All right. So what we're going to do here, this is an ASP.NET Core website. Um, it is here to, uh, to take these files from me. There's a dog.jpg file here. It might be a picture of a dog. It might not be. It's definitely a picture of a dog. <laughs> so this is a picture of a dog. I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to submit it. And what, what's happening here is um, this ASP.NET Core website is uh, taking this picture, uploading it to blob storage, and it's triggering a function to get the image analyzed. So if we go back here, uh, we'll see, oh, there we go. It's coming through here. So now this is coming back through uh, Cognitive Services, and it's saying, OK, this was a dog lying on a wood floor. Uh, there's definitely some floor, and there's definitely some dog in it. Uh, that's pretty accurate, I think. <laughs> so uh, now that we brought up functions a little bit here, um, I would like to uh, to hand over to Amy. So I'm just gonna close this up, make everything nice and clean, and uh, and scooch over. So uh, so Amy can work with you guys. Awesome. Thanks, Dom. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for catching my mistake there. Of course. Anytime. <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs> All right. Cool. So yeah, so as Dom was saying, um, I want to show you guys a little bit about Azure Functions. Um, so hopefully you have heard about Azure Functions because they're super cool. Um, but um, they're also pretty new technology, uh, just over a couple of years old. Um, they're a serverless, event-driven way to get a quick task um, like up and running, so think like um, image or order processing or something that you just like want to run on a schedule. Um, and it does that without the need for you to build a whole application infrastructure behind it. Um, in addition, Azure Functions ties in with uh, existing Azure services or third party services such as um, Twilio, which we just saw the ad for earlier. Um, and there's a number, uh, it's really easy to get started as uh, we have a number of different templates um, available. So for example, like uh, Blob Trigger, uh, GitHub webhooks, and allows you to get started really quickly um, with the uh, common scenarios. So Azure Functions in Visual Studio for Mac. 
Um, so what, what kind of support do we have here? Well, all of our templates, um, uh, they're supported for the, um, the V2 Azure Functions runtime. Um, we also have .NET Core 2.0 plus support. Um, uh, there's a ton of templates that are actually available through the new project dialog. So you can just go in, like create a new project, select the template, and from there you can, you can actually configure the template um, with your connection string and whatnot. Um, and you have it, something that's up and running, um, you can actually just run it there locally. Um, we do now have local debugging. And my favorite with our newest release, um, we're super excited to announce that you can now publish your function to Azure, um, which and I'll show you, just show you this in a couple of minutes. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. So Visual Studio for Mac now allows you to create Azure functions from start to finish. It allows you to go from file new to publish it, publishing it on Azure and getting it up and running. Um, so yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. So, let me give you a little glimpse into uh, the world of Azure Functions on Visual Studio for Mac. Let's see. Awesome, so I'll just open this. Um, I'm just gonna work with this same app that Dom had just introduced. Um, so this, this super cool web app allows you to upload a photo um, up into blob storage. Um, this triggers um, the, the function and um, runs it through cognitive services and is basically analyzed. Um, so like I was saying, Oh, I kind of kind of want to run it to, to show off my cat. <laughs> um, so the the dog is is uh, one of my close friends' dogs, but the cat hair is uh, my cat. is Amy's own cat. <laughs> <laughs> and I dare say the cat is cuter than the dog. Yeah. <laughs> Um, There's no costume though on this cat. <laughs> she doesn't need one. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna submit that and go back to my function, and it should just take a little, little bit. I've done everything right. Right there, there it's we go. working. It's running. Um, yeah, and so this is so this function itself is actually just running locally. Um, so this is just running on my machine. Um, the uh, you know the only connection to, to Azure is just the to the blob storage and uh, running it through cognitive services. Um, yep, it looks like a cat looking at the camera. Awesome, that's exactly what it is. Nice, I love cognitive services. They're super cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so um, let me just go back to Visual Studio. So this um, this function was created from the uh, blob trigger function. Um, it was created from the blob trigger function uh, template, which you can find just through the new project dialog. And that's just located under Cloud and uh, General. Uh, you just hit Next. And you can just select your initial template from here. Um, we have some documentation as well online that describes these in a little bit more detail if you want to try and figure out which one is the right one for you. So I'll just call my function Amy because, yeah. Um, Not Amy is cool function? No. Oh, OK. No, this is, um, this is just, <laughs> just showing the template. Um, and so this connection string setting is you would just get it from um, the, the portal. Um, so you can just copy your connection string from there, put it in here, and uh, it will have it all set up and running for you um, as soon as you hit create. Um, so you know debugging locally is cool, um, but um, you know what if I want to use this like in my app? Like what if I want to actually um, do something with with this that's not just on my machine? 
Um, so what I want to do is uh, publish this function to Azure. So I'm going to show that to you guys now. Um, so to publish to Azure, we're just going to right click on the function, publish, and publish to Azure. So whenever you publish to Azure, um, it's going to take whatever you're signed in to Visual Studio for Mac with um, and, and use that, see if there's a sub, an Azure subscription um, and kind of go through um, uh, go through, and it will display all the Azure app services that is, or that is connected to any subscription that you've logged in with. Um, so I do have a couple here. But I want, you know, for the sake of demo, I just want to show you how to create a new app service. So we're just going to hit the new button here. Um, I'm going to call it something uh, function Amy um, dot .co. Cool. And this has to be globally unique as well, so it will tell you if if this has been taken before. It won't actually let you go ahead and create it if the name's already taken. Uh, you want to uh, select your subscription. And you want to um, select your uh, resource group. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm selecting the resource group that the storage account that my function is using and my um, .NET Core app is using. Um, So I want to make sure that I've got the, the resource group that has that storage account. I'm going to create a custom um, service plan. Um, obviously, the, the pricing region is, is dependent on your personal circumstances. Um, so I'm going to try and go for a consumption. I'm going to go for the East US. Um, and let me see, net conf plan function. Really good at naming stuff. Um, okay, next, and we want to. There's the storage account that we want to create. So, if I hit create, should create my app service and publish everything to Azure. Here's where the magic happens. Here's where <laughs> I hope the internet doesn't uh, fail on me. And this takes. Just a couple minutes sometimes? Yeah, it normally takes a couple of minutes to do. I mean, it depends if you're using existing um, like app services or stuff. If it's an existing app service, it doesn't need to create everything. So um, it, it, it's a little bit shorter, um, obviously, depending on your internet speed and everything as well. Things can just take a little bit of time. Um, but yeah, cool. It looks like Syed's in the channel answering all your questions. Thanks, Syed. Yeah, thank you, Sayed. Cool. Awesome. Are there any other questions or anything while we're waiting for this to? Yeah. It must okay. be because we're doing we're such so, a good yeah, job yeah, such just a great explaining everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is looking good. It's publishing to Azure. Don't feel on me now, Internet. Uh, so I think, you know, maybe while we uh, we wait for the second here, um, I'll just give you a, a preview um, of what I'll just jump into next. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about version control. Uh, I know that's pretty important to a lot of people, uh, and we do have some uh, some new support for uh, for TFVC. So um, I will uh, definitely talk about that. Cool. Can't oh, wait for it. And uh, look all at right. That. Yeah. So. Um, uh, you will be prompted for this right now. Um, this is just making sure that whenever you are um, uploading to the portal, that the application settings um, of your function um, are using the, the V2 runtime. Um, so you just want to hit yes here. And boom. There we go. It all worked. And it's a happy face. Right. It's good whenever, yeah. yeah it's, it's good, good whenever when it's a, it's a happy winky face. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is Azure Functions in Visual Studio for Mac. Yeah, so let's pop back. Uh, yeah, there we are. Hi, us. Hi, everyone out there. <laughs> so uh, let's, uh, let's chat a little bit about version control. Uh, there's some version control options for you in Visual Studio for Mac. 
uh, support for uh, team uh, team foundation version control. There we go. I'm going to say TFVC from now on, so avoid tongue twisters. Uh, but <laughs> but support for that is currently in preview in Visual Studio for Mac. It's a uh, it's actually available uh, via an extension, so you can add it into you can add it into Visual Studio for Mac via the extension manager and uh, uh, via the gallery tab in the extension manager. And you can access the extension manager from the extension menu item in that Visual Studio uh, menu bar item, which Amy pulled for, uh, the preferences open from. Uh, once you've installed that uh, extension for TFVC, make sure you restart Visual Studio for Mac, uh, just to make sure yeah, everything is uh, nice and smooth. And then uh, as that extension's in preview, we're actually, we're actually updating that fairly regularly. So uh, you know, keep it up to date by going back to that place uh, that uh, extension manager, going to the updates tab, and uh, you know, checking for updates on a periodic basis. Yeah, and please try it out and file bugs. Oh yeah, yeah. We sh we showed you how to file bugs too. <laughs> we'll show you a little bit more of that uh, later too. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, with that extension installed, you can connect to TFS. You can t connect to VSTS. Uh, create. Uh, you can c connect to repositories there. You can create workspaces, navigate projects, uh, perform all the things that you know. That you're used to doing with uh, version control. Uh, and now let's move over to Git and Subversion. Uh, those are both actually uh, built into Visual Studio for Mac, the support there. Uh, so su um, the version control menu item and the, uh, the menu bar is going to be a best friend when you're working with these. Um, it's important to know that actually Git is installed by default on your Mac. Uh, so Macs come with Git installed. It's not usually the, the most recent version of Git, so you will probably want to go and update it um, you know, make sure you're on a, a, a recent version. Uh, but you know, that advice aside, now that that's taken care of, you know, you can uh, you can hook up to Git repositories. You can push. You can pull. You can do everything else that you can normally do with Git. Um, <clears throat> and then similarly with Subversion, uh, same same similar story. Uh, you can you know check out, update, um, check back in, commit. Uh, something important though on the Mac, uh, Subversion is not pre-installed like it is, uh, so you're going to have to uh, install Subversion. And one of the really easy ways to do that on the Mac is by installing the, uh, the Xcode command line tools. So I definitely recommend doing that if you'd like to use Subversion. Uh, now you uh, may be familiar with the ability that, uh, that you have on Windows in VS 2017 to, uh, to clone Git repos to VS 2017 from uh, VSTS. We're actually working right now on enabling that for VS for Mac. Uh, so stay tuned for more information on that. And then uh, I think Amy actually has a few, few little bits of information that she wants to share with you uh, before we close up. Yeah, so there's just an, another little bit of information that I, um, I just want to wrap up with. Um, important things to know just to make sure that you're really getting the best out of the IDE. Um, so that is making sure that your IDE is, getting, is being kept up to date or if you'd like to live on the wild side um, to check out our previews or even better our, um, our weekly bills. So we have um, three, maybe four channels um, in, the, in the updater dialogue. Um, that is stable, which is, you know, which it's your the releasable content that, that we want to be, um, uh, that we're pretty happy Let's with. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have uh, the beta channel, which is our preview. Um, so you can stay up there for all the like juicy goodness. Um, and the alpha channel is our weekly build, which is literally the latest and greatest content. Um, we also have dynamic channels, um, which you know we will add them for specific purposes, such as um, Xcode 10. Xcode 10 yeah. yeah, so um, uh, of you uh, iOS developers. Yeah, for um, if you were trying to keep your uh, Xamarin and iOS app uh, up to date for iOS 12, um, we were uh, sending Xcode 10 updates through the, that dynamic channel. Um, it just meant it was much easier for you rather than having to go to the web and, and download everything from there. Um, you'll also get notified um, either through the toolbar or just by a pop-up whenever there are notifications. So I highly recommend that you stay on top of that. Um, you know, to update, um, you just bring up the updater dialogue, select the channel that you want, um, and you can switch to that channel, download, install, 
everything you know how to do. And like I was saying earlier, we have this new report a problem dialogue um, that came out. This is a new feature, I think, literally just the start of this week, yeah. maybe, right? Um, so this is in the 764 release of Visual Studio for Mac. Um, from this dialogue, it makes it really easy for you to be able to um, browse uh, any followed issues that you have, search for any issues to do with Visual Studio for Mac, or to actually uh, report a new problem just from right within the IDE. Um, so it just makes it really easier, easy for you to, you know, to give us that feedback, which you know we we always really appreciate everybody that takes the time to um, to feedback to yeah, us. Yeah, we 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 absolutely love to get the feedback. It helps us make a better product for you, and uh, the more details that you can give us in these issues uh, that you're filing, the better it allows us to you know to address them uh, a little bit more quickly with a little less uh, back and forth. Um, so. If you're going to be filing issues and you want to see if you can beat Amy in the filing bugs department, uh, feel free and thank you. Yeah, um, so thank you guys so much for taking the time to listen to us. We really appreciate it. Um, if you want some more information, um, you can always go to aka.ms um, forward slash visual studio for Mac. If you have never um, used Visual Studio for Mac before and now you're interested, you can download it straight from that page. Um, if you want to get up to scratch on Visual Studio, we've got the, the awesome, awesome content written um, by our docs team, um, aka.ms forward slash vsmac hyphen docs. Um, so it's really good to keep up with all the content there. And if you have questions um, that either we can't answer now or you just want to talk to us or you want to just listen to what we have to say, um, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, I'm Tom, you take it. Tom is Sam Sam Dom. And Dom. <laughs> One of these days I'll, uh, I'll update that, but uh, not right now. Uh, but thank you for listening to yeah, us. Yeah, it was, thank it you was so a pleasure. Much. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks everyone.